Hi folks, and welcome back to The Original Church. Today's question is, did the original Christians pray repeated prayers? Well, first we should ask, did Jesus pray repeated prayers? And the answer is, yes, he did. He grew up praying the prayers of his Jewish faith. For Jesus and all the first Christians, the table rituals of the family home and synagogue worship all centered around repeated prayers and psalms. But before you start to think, well, maybe Jesus meant to change all that, like, for example, the requirements of the dietary laws, just be patient. We'll get back to that thought. Now, remember what I said in a previous video about ancient culture being a memorization culture. Christians in the original church did not think of prayer as being off the cuff. They did not do that evangelical thing where you rest your elbows on your knees and you say the phrase, Father, we just wanna a hundred times in five minutes. That is not how the original Christians thought of prayer. The pastors and the laity of the original church would normally think of praying as hearing prayers read, and then they would say amen to agree with them, or as reciting memorized prayers. Eventually, those who could afford to own a prayer book might think of praying as reading prayers, but they did not generally think of praying as making up a prayer on the spot. If there was a special situation, the pastor would write a prayer for that. And the primary prayers of worship were the prayers of Holy Communion. Now these prayers were mostly prayers of thanksgiving, and the Greek word for thanksgiving is Eucharist. So Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, in the original church simply came to be called the thanksgiving, the Eucharist. And the Eucharistic prayers were written out and they're already preserved for us in the early church manual document known as the Didache. Now I'm not saying that no one ever prayed spontaneously in the early church. In fact, when Justin Martyr wrote his first apology in about the year 150, he implied that there was some room for spontaneous embellishment even of the Eucharistic prayers by the presider. And it may be that in some more charismatic circles of the original church, in some of their prayer meetings, there was room for even lay people to pray improvisationally. But in those cases, the ability to do this would be considered a charismatic gift, rather like being able to sing well. Not everyone can do it. So even if or when there was room for spontaneous or improvisational prayer, it would have been considered the privilege of the presider, or maybe something that a few people would have as a charismatic gift, but still under the authority of the presider. And the point is that it was not seen as something most Christians would do. Most Christians in the original church would pray by reciting repeated prayers and psalms. And by the time the monastic life develops, the memorizing and the repeating of the psalms became the core of their prayer life. And one thing that the monks discovered was this, repeating a prayer helps you focus. It's really the opposite of what you would think because you might think that repeating a prayer would make you just go through the motions. But we're human and we're weak and we get distracted. And how many times have you had that experience where you're praying a memorized prayer, perhaps the Lord's Prayer, and by the time you get to the end, you don't even really remember praying all the words of the prayer. It's because you got distracted, your mind wandered, and you just prayed it by going through the motions. But repeating a prayer helps you focus and really pray it because if you miss one part one time because you got distracted, you'll catch that part the next time you repeat the prayer. And so repeating the prayer ensures that you really pray every part of it. But did Jesus mean to change all this? Did he mean to move away from repeated prayers? Well, in Luke's gospel, we read where he told the parable of the persistent widow, sometimes called the parable of the unjust judge. Now, the only possible interpretation of this is that persistence in prayer is a good thing. And Jesus says as much as he's introducing the parable. So would God really expect us to pray persistently for the same thing, but have to come up with new words to say it every time? More to the point, Jesus taught his disciples 
the Lord's Prayer. When they asked him, teach us how to pray, he taught them a prayer that was meant to be repeated. Now, the original Christians would have called this the Our Father, because in the ancient world, a title of anything is actually just the first line of it. So because the first line of the prayer is Our Father, they would have called this prayer the Our Father. Jesus expected his disciples to memorize this prayer and to teach it to their disciples, and he expected his followers to repeat it. And there's two things we can show that prove this. Number one, no one in the original church or in the church fathers ever criticized the idea of repeating prayers. It was always just assumed and it was never questioned. You pray by repeating the same prayers over and over again. Second, the Our Father is included in that very early church manual called the Didache. Now I want you to notice something. You may know that there are two versions of the Our Father in the New Testament, one in Matthew and one in Luke. Have you ever looked at them very closely? Because the version that you probably have memorized is neither. It's not the one from Luke, that's a shorter version, and it's not even the one from Matthew. The one that you have probably memorized is the one from the Didache, where it was standardized and it was memorized and it was written down because people prayed it verbatim. And it's only in the Didache where we get that added tagline, for yours is the power and the glory forever, or whatever version of that you know. Look it up. That last line is not in the Bible. It comes to us from the tradition of the original church written down in the Didache. And the Didache was written at about the same time as the Gospels, or maybe slightly later. Okay, now what about that passage, Matthew 6, 7? Jesus says, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Now, some translations of the Bible use phrases there like meaningless repetition, thoughtless repetition, or vain repetition. But guess what? The Greek does not have the word repetition. The Greek text there means something like blabbering or babbling on. You see, in this passage, Jesus is not criticizing repetition in prayer at all. It should be translated something like empty words. Here in this passage, Jesus is criticizing two things. Number one, praying as the pagans do, which means going on and on to try to cajole the gods into giving you what you want. And the other thing here, more specifically, is he is criticizing the Pharisees who are praying with eloquent speech to impress the people who are listening. In short, he's actually criticizing people who are praying spontaneously because they go on and on and they're trying to be impressive with their words. Now, immediately after the parable of the persistent widow in Luke's gospel, Jesus also talks there about the Pharisee and the tax collector. The tax collector was praying the prayer, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, the Greek doesn't quite clarify whether he repeated that phrase over and over again, but in the early church, this prayer, the prayer of the tax collector, becomes one of the most important early Christian devotions. It's called the Jesus Prayer. You may have heard of it, but it's the simple prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that prayer was meant to be prayed over and over again. So, if you're looking at Matthew 6, 7, and your Bible has the word repetition in that verse, get a new Bible. And I am not kidding. Now, I'm going to have a future video on how to choose a good English Bible. But if your translation has the word repetition in it, then the translators have added an interpretation, an interpretation that assumes that somehow repetition itself is meaningless or vain. But in doing that, they have done a disservice to the text and to you who want to read the Bible. They have added an interpretation that would not be acceptable in the original church. So, 
Memorized prayers? Repeated prayers? Yes. That's how Christians prayed in the original church. Salute. Hey, thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. I really appreciate that. Please share this video with your friends and please join me in the original church community on locals.com. Don't forget that if you join the original church community on locals.com, you can join me each week for a live, in-depth, chronological Bible study. It's live streamed every Saturday, but you can watch it later if you're not available. So join me for that and I'll see you there. I hope to see you there. I hope to see you there and I'll see you there.